Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs and today I've got new Occasions catalog products to show you. The 2019 Occasion Stamping Up catalog has come out and along with it the Celebration catalog has come out. Celebration is a three month period that Stampin' Up offers free products with every $50 or $100 purchase. And everything in this catalog is free and I'm gonna use one of those things, actually two of those things today and I'll show you in the catalog where they are. I am using the Tea Time stamp set from the Occasions catalog. I thought this was just a really fun set. Um, I've colored it in Poppy Parade to make it really pop and I've used it to create a little desktop calendar. Hopefully you can see that. I make these every year uh, to send out to customers. Let me just show you a few. You can go to my blog pinkbucker.com and actually see all of these um, closer up, but I always use new occasions catalogs, uh, catalog products to make them, to, to kind of give everybody a sneak peek of what's coming. This is my own personal one that I have up on my desk. I really love the cactus. I don't know, maybe I'll have to switch those two out. And let's see, this is the card that I made first with a teapot, and as you can see, I use it as inspiration to make this calendar. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and let me tell you how this is made. First off, we're gonna do some watercoloring. I'll tell you about the stamps and or the calendars in just a little while. There's a link on my blog, but when we get there, I'll tell you all about it. We're going to stamp the teapot and the rose in um, stays on ink because we're gonna watercolor. I've been using my aqua painter quite a bit lately and we're gonna watercolor these. Um, because it's such a big area, I felt like it would be a little bit faster if I used my aqua painter. But of course you could use your stamp and blends. You could also use your watercolor pencils on this as well. Now something new about our stamps in the spring occasions catalog is that they are no longer clear mount. They're called cling mount. And what that means is that your stamps, let's see, here's the rose. When you put the label on it, it's actually gonna stick to your block. Our old design, the clear mount stamps, once you put those labels on it, they did not stick very well. So Stampin' Up! worked really hard to redesign their stamps so that we can put the stickers on our stamps and they will cling really well to our clear blocks. So let me show you how to mount this. Um, you're gonna get your stamp and you pull off, there's a paper on the back, you pull off that paper and then you come to your sticker sheet and you wanna start in the middle and leave the sticker stuck over here to the paper. Just pull off this backing. We don't actually need to do that part because, well, I guess we could go ahead and just get it out of the way. That piece of the stamp actually, as you can see, has been pulled off. All right, now you're gonna take your stamp and very carefully lay it down onto the sticker and be very careful because once you get it stuck there, that's it. All right, push it down and then pull it up and now you have your sticker. And let's see, we wanna pull this part out because that's gonna collect ink and be really ugly. There we go. And that's how you put your, your stickers on your stamps. Now, it's going to stick beautifully to your clear blocks. It's not gonna come off. In fact, it's so sticky that if you leave it on your block for any period of time, it's gonna actually kind of almost be hard to take off, which is a good thing. We want them to stick really well. And I've got a tip for you. If you go to remove it and you're finding that it's really sticking, just take the tip of your, your uh, scissors or your piercer and just get it started and then peel it off. Every time you use it, that super stickiness will, um, go down a little bit. Each time it's not gonna be as super sticky, so don't worry about it. It is a great benefit to have on our stamps. If the super stickiness bothers you, what I do is I take it and just kind of put it on my jeans for a second and take it off, and that takes quite a bit of the sticky off and it makes it less sticky, but still enough sticky to stick to the block. Um, I, we haven't had them long enough for mine to completely lose their stickiness. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but if it does, all you have to do is wash it um, in the sink with some Dawn soap and that stickiness comes right back. They're great. They're really, really an awesome design. All right, well, let's go ahead and stamp. I am using Stays On Black because Stays On 
is an alcohol-based ink. It is not going to smear when we watercolor it. All right, let's stamp that right there. Then you're gonna get your rose and stamp it right there. Now, for good measure, I always like to hit my stamps. I'm gonna watercolor real quickly with a heat tool. This isn't a necess necessity, but sometimes if I start coloring too quickly with my watercolor, I get the, the ink to smear just a bit. It usually happens with that light yellow. So I'm just gonna hit it real quick to ensure that we're not gonna have any ink smearing. All right. The color I'm gonna start with is Poppy Parade. This is a big, bold color. And there's two things that you can do to get your ink into a palette. You can take a clear block and you can stamp it on there and it'll have the ink. In fact, let's do that. And then I'll show you the other option in just a little while. So just take one of your clear blocks, flip it over like that. And now you're ready to color. You're also gonna need a paper towel. I'm gonna grab my chair because I color much better when I'm sitting down. All right, get your aqua painter. This is like a paintbrush marker. You untwist this and you fill it with water and you wanna squeeze that water out. You can see I've got a little bit of color left from last time, so I'm just gonna clean it off. And then dry it enough so that it's not drippy. We don't want a lot of drip, drip, drip wetness on our image. And I like to go and just give it a wash with water to begin with. We, uh, you don't want, like I said, for there to be puddles of water because that's when things start running and dripping off, but just a, a light little wash of water. Now I'm gonna take this, my ink, and I'm just gonna start coloring. You can see how that little bit of water takes that watercolor and really starts to, to spread it around. And it's a really nice, quick way to color. If you colored this with your Stampin' Blends, it's probably gonna take a little bit longer. It'll be a completely different look too. I, um, for some reason lately, have just really been using my Aqua Painter. I love it. It's very fun and satisfying. It's quite therapeutic and it makes me feel like an artist. I do love my Stampin' Blends too. So it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. All right, so very carefully, you see I'm not squeezing any water. I've got enough water here on the tip of my brush to spread all of this around. And we're gonna go back here in a little while and add some color into where we would have the dark spaces. I start at the bottom because I wanted it to be lighter up here at the top. When something has light on it, it's sitting maybe on a table and there's a light above it, the light the top part will be lightest and down here at the bottom is where it will be darker so i'm going to go around here with some dark let's color in that little pedestal down there careful not to get out of the lines i'm kind of going quickly for the video so i'm not sure how good my coloring is going to be um, when you get over here to the handle, really make sure you don't have a lot of water because you've got to do some really fine coloring, keeping your, your movement small because this is a smaller area. You can also use, if you don't have an aqua painter and you want to get the water coloring look, you can use a blender pen. This is a pen that kind of looks like a marker and it's not refillable. It has a substance inside of it that will color. It's not water. It'll take the color and spread it around. It's not quite as watercolory as the, the aqua painter, but it does do the same effect. You can use your regular inks to get the same sort of effect. All right, so see how I'm just kind of spreading that color. Now I'm gonna come up here this is gonna be dark. The back side of the actual teapot would be dark. And I'm also gonna go around the edge right here where we would have a little bit of a shadow like that. All right, I think we're done. 
Now you'd want to give it a few minutes to dry. It'll dry pretty quickly, but you can also hit it with your heat tool again to get it totally dry. Now before we move on to the cutting, I'm going to squeeze water out of my, my aqua painter here and get all of that poppy parade out of my brush because now I'm going to do yellow. Daffodil Delight. And this is the other way you can make a palette. You close your pad, turn it over, and push into that ink. And that puts ink right there on the inside lid. And whoops, I forgot to give us a little wash. That puts ink right there on the inside lid of your um, ink pad. Now this project, you guys, was originally done on a Facebook Live. This is the clean recording. If you want the full details on this project, including measurements and product information, there will be a link here in uh, on YouTube where you can hop over to my blog and there will be a PDF under the last photo that has all the information that you need. You just click on it and you can open that PDF. You can save it, you can print it, you can download it, you can do whatever you want. Now while this is really wet, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that Poppy Parade here and just kind of spread that out in the middle. Get a little more yellow. I want it to just be kind of light. And I'm just gonna kind of blot it around. All right, so this time I have Old Olive here in the lid and I'm just going to color in those leaves and then we will be ready to cut them out. You could use any combination of colors here, of course. The designer series paper is black and white, so really the sky's the limit for whatever colors you want to use. All right, I think we're done coloring. Let's move all this out of the way. And I'm just gonna dry it for the video. I want it nice and dry before we run it through the big shot. Right, so we're going to cut it out with the framelits that I have mentioned were actually in the occasions catalog. The stamp set is here, I'm sorry, the stamp set is in the occasions catalog, page 49. Here you go. It is $22 American. And then you can get the framelits to cut them out for free with a $100 order. This catalog is full of things that are free. Uh, majority of them are free with a $50 order, but we've got a few things that are free with a $100 purchase, including these adorable tea time framelits. So let me pull my big shot over. And I've got something left over on my platform here. Let's get all that off. And we're going to put this here and let's get the matching framelits. I love when we've got matching framelits. I don't mind fussy cutting, but it's always nice to have those matching framelits. There we go. All right, let's cut it out and we'll be ready to assemble. There we go, so pretty. I just love those colors together. Daffodil Delight and Poppy Parade. Okay, let's let's create our calendar. I'm gonna start leave I'm gonna start by leaving it open. This is a card base, a half a sheet of cardstock that I've cut at four and a fourth and scored at five and a half, just like you would do with a card base. Now I have cut a piece of designer series paper that is actually also free with a $50 order. Let's see if we can find that real quick. It's called Botanical Butterflies and it's got butterflies on one side, but all the other sides are black and white. And if you know me, you know I am a little bit obsessed with black and white gingham or black and white buffalo check. So we're just going to adhere this to the bottom. I have cut a little scallop border with this framelit from the Be Mine stitched framelits. Those are our Valentine framelits. And we're gonna put it over here. We're gonna cover up that edge with the scallops facing up. 
Now for the calendar. These are from Tailored Expressions. There will be a link on my blog. And I buy them every year. They are the tiny, um, I don't remember the measurements, but they are in packs of 10 for $3. So they're very affordable. We're going to put some adhesive right there on that. Then let's get our dimensionals. And we will put, whoops, I didn't punch that part out. Put our dimensionals here. And put that down like that, sitting there on our calendar. And then we need to do our little flower. Beautiful rose. Now you could use any sentiment you want. In fact, on my card, I use one of our new word framelits to just put thanks. Um, but on here, we're gonna use a, this cute little sentiment that says, love is a warm cup of tea. And I just think this would be so cute for your friends who like tea to have on their desk. If they aren't necessarily a tea drinker, this card would still be great. You could change up the sentiment if you wanted. All right, now I'm gonna use the one inch circle punch to punch that out. Isn't that adorable, that font? I love it. All right, we're gonna put this right over here like it's tied to the handle right there. And then last but not least, of course, we've gotta add a bow. But we don't wanna put anything too big to distract from that beautiful teapot. So I am going to do just basic black baker's twine. All right, a little glue dot right there. And we'll put that right there. Whoops, I pulled it right off. Let's try that again, put it right there. All right, so there you go, there's the card front. Now we wanna make it stand up. So I have cut a piece of Thick Whisper White that is four inches by five and a half, and I've scored it at half an inch two and three fourths and five. And we're gonna fold it in half and then fold these little um, end pieces up. And we're gonna lay this inside. I've put a strong adhesive. You wanna use fast fuse or tear and tape right there. And then another bit of adhesive and close it. Now let's see the sides so you can see how that is. And there you have your dust calendar. And this actually folds up and fits into a regular envelope. So you could even send this in the mail and write your message on the back as your New Year's card. Wouldn't that be awesome? All right, you guys, I hope you like this project. Remember, there is a PDF that looks like this on my blog. Hop over there. Here's this project with all the measurements and the products that you need. And there's um, a couple other new projects over there on that post as well. I hope you have a wonderful new year and please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.